Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube. Covering AWS reInvent 2015. Now your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at AWS reInvent in Las Vegas, the Cube, Silicon Angles, flagship program. We go out to the events and extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier. We have two special guests here. Um, Al Bergio, CEO of IIX, also Consul Inc. And Paul Gampy, CTO of IIX and Consul, Consul Inc. It's kind of complicated, we'll flesh that out. Welcome back to the Cube, good Thank to see you guys. Much, Thank you. Um, so I saw you guys last night at the VC event. You guys obviously portfolio coming to the NEA. They had a little event with Highland Capital. Great to see all the entrepreneurs out there um, and all the VCs mingling here at reInvent. Almost kind of like the calm before the storm. Like, oh, damn, this thing is going to be, Amazon is really doing some serious damage. It's real, it's enterprise grade, ecosystem's developing and flourishing. You guys are now participating in that ecosystem. So I got to ask you, what is console doing What's IIX doing? Explain to the folks the difference and then the relationship with Amazon. So I have an answer to that. Um, we basically, it's, well to your point, this, it's undeniable. I mean, just to see the attendance here, um, enterprise movement to the cloud, the use of the cloud, it, it is real and it's growing. I mean, it's, it's just phenomenal to see the amount of activity here. Um, obviously, as, as we continue to grow towards the cloud and as organizations use that, um, people are looking at ways that, hey, how can we have a secure connection, a consistent connection to that? And, and uh, how we work with uh, Amazon AWS is, uh, we're one of their uh, Direct Connect partners, um, but we really took it to the next level uh, with console. We created uh, the ability to fully automate what an organization would need to do to directly connect, both from the uh, uh, connection perspective, but also from a provisioning Network perspective. Connection. Network connection, yeah. We fully, we basically created a platform that would extract all of the complexity to make it one click and allow them to you know, bypass public internet and directly connect and so. Versus what alternative? The alternative would be to you know, uh, use, uh, use the public internet, um, which if it's something that's business critical, you, you may not necessarily experience a, a secure, um, definitely not private, uh, but not a, 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 uh, a connection that will be consistent in terms of uh, access to bandwidth, that consistent, stable connection. And uh, many enterprises you know, want to um, have a private connection to their business critical information uh, and applications that they, that they use. And so um, with that, you know, we basically uh, assisted those companies in, in being able to leverage our platform to, to, to get access to something like that with a click of a button. So you're, Al, you're the CEO, so explain what IIX is and what console is. So um, IIX um, is a company that uh, was founded in 2011. It's essentially our company. And uh, we went through an evolution um, uh, along a path of interconnection and helping it evolve. And um, console was really uh, our, our um, software development effort that we kept in stealth mode um, built a platform and then recently unveiled it to the marketplace. So and it's just so a sub-branding issue. It's sub-branding, There's no yeah. like separate company, it's all one company, no, it's, IIS, it's, yeah. console it's a, is the brand. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a unit within our organization. Yeah. Okay, so IIX console, all big one company. All one company. Okay, that's cool, so we got that cleared up. Um, the marketplace, um, <laughs> Paul, you've been doing internet connections going back years, right, decades. Yep. Back in DNS days, you understand what it takes to connect people. You know, Mark Zuckerberg used the word, I want to connect the world problem. Now that's Facebook, yeah. it's an application. Mm -hmm. But there are actually physical connections that need to be made, and logical connections. Mm -hmm. What is the real technical and product uh, feature that you guys are delivering? What actually is the product? Yep, so the primary thing that we're doing is aggregating all of the traditional layer one layer two and layer three technologies into one click and point solution which we can get access to via the console platform. 
So the layer one's still there, you need to have a physical cross connect to our network, whether it be in a data center via our data center partners or via our network service provider partner program. So we kicked off those two partner programs to lower the barrier entry. So the enterprise can now work with data center operators that they currently have a relationship with or network service providers they have a, a relationship with to get that layer one. And from there on, that's where the software defined networking or the software defined interconnection that we built really comes into play. So an enterprise has not normally dealt in this world, right? They're not normally dealing with layer two configurations, and they're certainly rarely deal with participating in layer three. Al talked about this back at Console Connect Live, where he mentioned that there are 70,000 autonomous system numbers that have been issued, and only 50,000 show up in the internet. That's really such a low number when you consider the number of enterprises that are participating. You know, where's all the enterprises? You know, there's, there's more than 70,000 companies uh, you know, that are Globally. obviously more yeah. than that. So I, I love, you know, I love your business model. You know, I've been publicly supporting out of the cube in the past. Yeah. The idea of connecting and bypassing the internet yeah. to have suppliers or businesses, diverse businesses, connect and have secure yeah. the services. So that's cool. But I want you to uh, now go to the next level with me and unpack the impact of Amazon Cloud because Andy Jassy was here in the cube saying. You know, our ecosystem's flourishing, they have a multiple revenue model where the ecosystem makes a lot more than Amazon makes, so the money's starting to hit the table. What that means is people are going to start building businesses on top of Amazon. That means more services will be exposed, APIs, DevOps, than ever before. Yeah. Is that something that you guys are targeting specifically? Um, because if I'm, I'm in a large enterprise, I might want to connect with some startup that's on Amazon doing some badass DevOps, have a great product, but now I want to make sure it's secure, right. but they might be a smaller company, maybe they have 20 people, 200 people. It doesn't matter, if I like the product, I want to connect to it. Yeah. If I'm going to bring that into my enterprise, isn't that the security challenge? Am I getting that right? Explain that whole cloud phenomenon, how the trend of AWS impacts your product and ultimately value proposition. Yeah, I mean, whether, whether in the AWS cloud uh, or in a cloud, um, enterprises wanting to directly connect, we can absolutely help with that. We can, our platform is essentially is the only platform of its kind that allows uh, the ability for complete automation and access to something. You asked the question before, you know, what, what's the alternative? Beyond the internet, an enterprise would need to become a global network operator to actually connect, because the reality is all businesses don't live in one building or yeah. one location. So cloud company A, SaaS company B, whatever is business critical for your business um, and you want to directly connect to it, you would otherwise need to become a global network operator. And you know, for most organizations, not, that's not really their focus. And so as they're looking to the cloud, cloud infrastructure, cloud services, SaaS companies and so forth, um, console is a natural partner for them to be able to uh, alleviate yeah. the need to become a global network operator and directly connect. And certainly if you're running packets over the public internet, like I said, it's like having tinted windows. You don't know who's in that car. Yeah. Evil guys are in there. You know, you get the bad guys running around, spoofing packets, all kinds of dangerous things are happening. Yeah, DDoS so that, attacks. DDoS so attacks, spoofing, yeah. all yeah. the things that you guys, you guys are seeing, right? Yeah. But the question I'll ask you is, I'm a network naysayer. Whoa, hey, you know, I don't need these guys. I'll just run encrypted tunneling on MPLS link. Why not just do that? So, at the end of the day, you know, you can have a phenomenal solution uh, or use status quo, but if there's no ecosystem, right, you're going to connect to nothing. And so, part of the core focus of console. So in a way, it's a lock-in spec. Yeah, we basically You're locking in a path that you may or may not have to unwind, right? But we've created this also this marketplace of cloud. Explain the marketplace thing. So, um, Essentially, it's a non-discriminatory platform. Anybody that uses console is a part of that ecosystem. In other words, you could be a cloud infrastructure company, you could be a SaaS company, uh, a manufacturer, it doesn't matter, you know, it's non-discriminatory. You become part of that, and so your business critical partners see that you're there and have the opportunity to connect to you. And, and reversely, you on the platform can go out and seek um, cloud, partner, whatever's business critical, and click away. Kind of like a social platform, Right, based on your own self-defined yeah. criteria. You'll click buttons and send out connection requests and they're accepted and now you're directly connected. It's a similar concept to that, what we've created with console. We've made it that literally that easy. So it's really easy to get in, one click to get in. Paul, I got to ask you the technical question because now you're talking about systems and network engineers. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, what customers are, what we're hearing in theCUBE this week is, it's about the data. 
yeah. right? You talk about the packets, you know, the car an example. It's about the data they want to secure. That's not the network guy's problem. They're like, whoa, I don't, I don't own the data, I just do the network. So in a way, the data is exposed over the network. So the network engineer now has to be mindful of the fact that I got to architect and build these networks with now a non-discriminatory opportunity. That's an interesting value proposition. Yeah. So what does that mean for the network guy? Explain, talk to the network guy out there and, and what does it mean for him, his skills, does it change his game at all? What yeah, does that all mean? Absolutely, I think it changes his workload immensely because it's now data in transit. The traditional network engineer is dealing with data that's on premise, right? All of your critical applications or your critical data is inside your firewall. Now that world's changing. There's huge economic advantage in moving to virtual machines. Let's face it, Amazon, you know, we're here at AWS reInvent because virtualization has empowered Amazon to deliver massive compute power at a fraction of the cost. And the enterprise, you mentioned earlier yeah. about how the money is flowing in here, and it's because it's delivering economic advantage to the enterprise. So what that done is it's extended the perimeter. The network engineer now has, his perimeter is in AWS, his perimeter's the remote engineer that's dialing in. And that's put a lot of load on them. That's well, a, certainly a, the internet, the, the cloud is unsecured, it's perimeterless. Exactly. So, so why would you run out of the internet and have unpenetration? Well, and and, yeah. and, 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 and you, you have limited control and power. You, yeah. you basically, the minute it goes on the internet, um, you lose control, essentially, and to the extent that there's an issue, it's very difficult to troubleshoot because it's traversing through so yeah. many other networks. Yeah. It's not your own network, and if it's your own network, you have control. We essentially give an organization, essentially, their own global network. Um, you know, you hit a point about data in motion. Merv Adrian at Gartner, at, last week in New York at the Dupe Summit, at Big Data NYC, our event on theCUBE, said the big trend last week was data in motion. Yes. Okay, now that's, that's up and down the stack. That's spark and memory, yeah. now down to the network, as you were saying. So now the network guy owns the problem, too. So yeah. what is the network guy's role now? How do you guys come and speak to him? To say, hey, new model, is it a changeover? Are they going to be scared? Are they going to embrace you guys? How do you talk to that new guy? Because he now has to be, he's more powerful. The network engineer, under your scenario, has more power Absolutely. to implement yeah. change for security. Yeah, and I think what that network engineer is is a partner that understands the space. Somebody who's going to have your know, uh, tradition of being involved in extending the network, in helping promote interconnection as a means to get direct connectivity. The VPN's not enough. An internet overlay isn't going to solve your security problem. You need to have a partner who understands and has a global network that allows you to get direct connectivity between you and AWS or Azure or other cloud providers that you have. And you know, console gives you that. It also gives you a user interface that allows you to see in a way that you've never had that opportunity before. So you've got transparency. Not only can you point and click where you want your network connected, you've got the visibility into the health of your network. So we, want, we see ourselves empowering the network engineer. Yeah, I mean it's, you know, you use the phrase at our event, uh, the 10X WAN engineer. It empowers that engineer to do, to do the work of 10 now. I mean, a lot of companies, yeah. um, you know, engineers are, are you know, depending on their organization, wishing they're having more resources, more peers, so that they can get more done, but they're expected to do more with less. And so we basically, you know, console helps empower them to, to essentially do more for their organization and shine. In, 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 in many respects. Well, I think that's the key thing. The 10X engineer was a concept that was coined in the DevOps world for full stack developers. Yeah. Kind of the ninjas, the rock stars, whatever you want to call it. The, the, the elite. Yeah. Network guys are pretty elite. I mean, they're going to be yeah. cocky too. We know, we know <laughs> a lot of them. I know a lot of friends, my friends. Network engineers, oh, I, I got, they're smart as hell. We know yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So now a, a 10X network engineer has to say, okay, I've done my thing. And usually they're kind of uh, away from the value. Now, what you're saying is, they now can contribute directly to the business value. Because now, when you're talking about a marketplace, yeah. you're now connecting suppliers, customers, services, products. If you believe the integrated stack and Amazon model, people are going to be pulling services from multiple vendors really fast, not like get a massive service agreement, do all this stuff. They want to lock in, maybe some shadow IT kicks in. Absolutely. The network engineer now is involved in this. They're, that fueling, they're helping fuel innovation for their organization. Yeah. And that's really key. It's, it's um, you know, take the iPhone. You put it, you put it in the hands of, of people. Innovation starts to happen, and th and that's what we see. You know, sort of the future. Um, give them the tools, and then amazing things start to happen. And, and um, you know, definitely network engineers with the right tools can can help fuel further innovation. Um, not just for their organization, but for an industry, and, and uh, we're hoping to play a big role in that. Right, I'd like you guys to both comment on my last question, we're running out of time, but I want you guys to share with the audience what's some of the feedback you're getting, because you're a startup still, I mean, you're growing, you have some good funding, I'm sure, 
you'd have another round coming, um, from what I could tell last night. <laughs> Swarm with the VCs around you. Um, what's the feedback here at the show? You guys got a good boot location. What are you hearing for business opportunities? Al, and what's the technical comments from, this is a super geeky show, so what's yeah. the, what are yeah, you hearing from a business, business opportunity, and technical? We're definitely, I mean, it, the, the end customer activity is phenomenal here. But in addition to that, uh, there's many, many partners that, um, and prospective partners that have approached us uh, wanting to partner with Console. So this uh, AWS reInvent has, has been a phenomenal uh, opportunity in that respect to really help us not grow just our customer ecosystem, but our partner ecosystem. And, and uh, we're really, really happy that we're here. Yeah. How about the technologists that swing by? Yes, yeah, so there are me, some alpha geeks that would see this right away. Oh, Click. absolutely. Yeah. So I think the top and bottom for me, you know, we're seeing engineers working at SaaS companies approach us and saying, "Look, we're getting customers asking us about getting Direct Connect. Is that something that you do? Do you do? Do you understand BGP?" Yeah, and so absolutely, you know, that's our core domain. That we can help you with that. So the sophisticated DevOps, you know, the 10x DevOps guys come to us and say, "We need a partner." who can help us get now. They get you guys right away. They get, well, we, they see us as a solution. Yeah, yeah. And that's absolutely they what we're trying it. to do. They see value. Yeah. And the second, you know, at the bottom of the stack, we see the network engineer saying, hey, you're behind the cloud router project? That's super cool. We want to have an open source community that's helping us innovate network technology. And so the, you know, the cloud router project's been really successful for us uh, adding value to the network engineer. Yeah, we're running out of time, but I want to get extra time. Explain the cloud router project. That is a really super project. Yeah. Uh, right. And getting great feedback here at AWS on that. Just Absolutely. share with the folks, give a plug for that. Yeah, so cloud router is now available uh, in the Amazon marketplace for free. So feel free to um, you know, spin up a VM and have a play with it. It's available in Docker, Rocket, a variety of other container and VM formats. We're really focused on adding, you know, there's a lot of technology around software-defined networking. Open Daylight, ONOS, Smart MonNet, uh, projects that are just not making their way into the traditional Linux operating systems because they're sort of focused up the stack. We're focused down the stack. We want to make this the, the best open source community for the network engineer. Yeah. And there is an open source community in this market, in your, in oh, your absolutely. area. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And you can, yeah. just a further plug, yeah. or you can go to cloudrutter.org. Yeah, cloudrutter.org. <laughs> oh, sorry, cloudrutter.org. Okay, guys, <laughs> IIX, yeah. which is console, is the brand name. <laughs> um, I think you're a real innovative opportunity. We've seen exchanges in the past, um, but I think now with the cloud, with APIs, with services that are going to be diverse and you know, all over the place, you know, persistent, secure connections, I mean, I don't really think people care about using the internet. They want the SLA around security. So yeah. I think you guys got a big opportunity. Good luck with everything. Great to have you on theCUBE. And thanks for, uh, having you know, us. Thanks for spending, stopping by. IIX console here inside theCUBE. We'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>